get started. Um, I want to say welcome to everybody who, sh who showed up. Thank you for participating in tonight's city meeting. Um, tonight's meeting is going to be a special one. We're going to announce uh, the candidates who are running for, for mayor. And um, we're going to talk about our city agenda. And we're going to have a, a good time dialoguing um, with, uh, with the community and your elected officials. So thank you very much. We're about to get started. It is now 7.03, Thursday, March 5th, 2020. And I'll call this meeting to order. We have the Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner Cynthia Miller. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
under mayor and commissioners, I see that the city vehicle uh, it was budgeted for $2,000 and $4,540.41 has been spent up to date. What is uh, yeah, what's going on there is that we had a uh, damage to that vehicle that was, uh, we had to repair them. We didn't collect the insurance on that until actually this week. So uh, you'll see, I believe it was about $3,500 we received in insurance recovery. So once you put that, that back in there, that account will be about $1,000 under budget. Okay, what, what vehicle? Um, I don't remember the, the make of it. It's the one uh, I believe the vice mayor drives. I, I don't remember the model. That the Altima or Ultima? Oh, okay. Nissan Altima. Nissan Altima, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? <coughs> See you thank you so much. You're welcome. Next, we have the Recreations, Parks, and Culture Department, Mr. Jeffrey Taylor. Uh, thank you, Commission. Please accept the minutes as submitted. Hello, District Heights. Hello, everyone. Um, I'll be brief. I know everyone's excited. I uh, just got a couple of updates. Monday, April the 13th is our annual Easter Monday party from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And uh, just want to note that during the spring break, which is Monday, April 6th through Friday, April the 10th, the recreation department will open early. So please share that with your children. Uh, this, um, we're going to open at 12.30 every day, Monday through Friday, April the 6th through April the 10th. <clears throat> and we'll have activities, board games, computer games, and of course, all of the sports activities that they like to participate in. So in other words, we hope to tire them out before they get home. And then um, at the bottom, if you have a report with you, just a little brief recap about our safety and security. Um, the first phase was back in the hallway. Many of you may know, many of you may not know, but we installed cameras a couple of years ago, as well as the blue doors that separate the gymnasium from the hallways were the doors for the rooms in the back. So we opened up that space by putting in the glass doors and removing the solid doors, adding the cameras, as well as um, the large monitors inside of the rec office so that we could have 24 hour surveillance, um, or definitely surveillance when we're in the building, along with the tax on the doors so that we can see when these doors are ajar, whether we're in the building or not. The second phase, is to install cameras in the gymnasium and start our phase, um, continue with our phase on the outside of the building as well. So for the first time, we'll be able to see the field, the basketball court, and a large section of the parking lot. Tables and chairs. Uh, thank you, Commission. We are in the process of ordering brand new tables and brand new chairs. And at the bottom, you'll see that the recreation program is scheduled. These are just currently the classes that we have. And um, if there are any questions, I'll be here, as well as Teresa Williams, if you have any questions. That concludes the report for now. I kind of stayed through because of the timing. I hope everyone's OK with that. Perfect. Thank you so very much. Are there any questions at all? Commissioner Irving. I would, su yes, I would suggest that you read the programs that you have because the people on TV, they don't have the opportunity to see what we're seeing. So at the bottom where you have recreations programs and yes, schedule, read the programs that you're offering, please. Yes, ma'am. Uh, currently we're hosting the girls mentoring. If there are any questions, we actually have a table back there tonight because we're so excited about that program. We also have a workshop this Saturday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. down in 400, room 400. Um, Boys Mentoring is a, another great program that we have. That program is actually growing, and it start, it's time to start getting those young men out on field trips. Um, 
financial literacy. That's a workshop that we host monthly. And um, math and reading tutoring is something that we host all year round. Martial arts, um, actually uh, martial arts is outgrowing the space that we have them in currently. So that program is running successful. Um, and we have several dance classes by the On Point Dance Academy. Um, I don't have all of the details, but they just won. They just placed first in a citywide competition um, over the weekend. And then, of course, we have our District High Boys and Girls Club cheerleaders. That's one through our District High Boys and Girls Club, but their practices are held here in the Recreation Center. And if there are any other questions, I, I can continue and, and answer. But those are just some of the, I don't have them all listed here, but these are the ones that I have listed here, Karen. Absolutely. Perfect. Absolutely. And I want to just really quick to uh, this Saturday, we have Read Across District Heights. It's an event that is going to feature literacy, financial literacy, uh, literacy in general, so we can have a, 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 a safe place for our young people to to do that. Uh, the time will be from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. We'll be serving uh, green eggs and ham and purple pancakes. Uh, we'll have face painting. We will have Senator Chris Van Hollen come out to be a reader for us here in the city. Um, also, there will be other mayors from other cities in, in Prince Williams County to welcome our children. Uh, the response has been overwhelming, uh, and we're going to do a uh, great job of having our kids in a first read across district high event uh, in Prince George's County. So it's going to be an awesome thing. I think the Library of Congress um, has done some great work with us and a lot of vendors. So it's, the place will be packed and we will have at least 100 kids or more here for read across district Heights. So I look forward to seeing the commission out and uh, everybody else. Thank you so much. So please come out. It's free. It's free of charge. Question. People want to volunteer to read, can they do so? Absolutely. We're always looking for volunteer readers to be a uh, part of this event. Um, we came to the ARP meeting uh, on Tuesday and we have a, had a resounding uh, show of support for that. So we have people who already came on board within the community to read to our babies on Saturday. So it's going to be an awesome event. So if you can, please come out and support our city and our first read across District Heights. The last thing, we're going we're gonna to put out a, a little library. Now, the library is where kids get books and take a book. And we'll always constantly refurbish those books for our kids so they can have something to read um, as long as they want. So uh, we'll have so many great things happening. So definitely show up 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. this Saturday uh, for Read Across District Heights. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. All right. Next, we have Police Department Report, Captain Chad Smith. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. My name is Chad Schmick. I am the Assistant Commander of the District 8 Station, but more importantly, I'm assisting the District Heights Police Department with operational guidance, and this is my first month in working with conjunction with the District Heights Police Department. Um, in the packet, you'll see all the enumerated crimes that are listed, but I want to highlight a couple things that is not in the packet. Uh, as far as productivity for the District Heights officers, we served five arrest warrants this month, this past month. There were six full custody arrests made. Two uh, psychiatric evaluations were made, meaning officers uh, took persons in custody that were in crisis for mental health evaluation at the hospital. One criminal citation was issued. One gun was recovered from an arrest. And 48 grams, a little over 48 grams of marijuana was recovered uh, in an arrest this past month. A couple of things that was asked of the police department regarding open and closed cases in, uh, that occurred in District Heights. There, were, there are eight open cases 
currently for this past month of February. Primarily, those are the burglaries. Uh, many people might have seen the news report some time ago highlighting burglaries that were occurring in the city of District Heights. I will reassure everyone that the officers are briefed daily as to the information that's obtained, um, updates from our investigators. We're making sure that the officers are aware of the issues, and I'm making sure that they are kept abreast of the areas where they need to concentrate and focus. We did have three closed cases, meaning arrests were made either on scene or that information was developed, either video footage or what have you, which allowed us to properly identify the suspects and then file for criminal charges against those suspects. And then one case where a uh, vehicle that was stolen from another jurisdiction was recovered within the city of District Heights. So that's everything I have. Is there any other questions for the police department? Any questions at all for the commission? Seeing none, thank you very much for the report. Thank, thank you. Next, we have a report from the general government. Dr. Charlie Crestville. Good evening. Please accept the general government report for February 2020 as submitted. Um, just a few highlights. Uh, you have the report in front of you in your packet. Uh, there were a few questions during public participation over the last few meetings that we've had. And I uh, just wanted to address a few things. I know there was a gentleman in the town hall meeting that was held. He had a concern about uh, Prince George's County school bus driving too fast in the city limits. And he did identify the bus number. I did reach out to our school board, and they, uh, in turn, had the Department of Transportation that provides transportation reach out to me. They have uh, spoken to all of the bus drivers that actually provide transportation in this community in regards to obeying all traffic laws and making sure that they drive the speed limit. Um, there was a question regarding the women's restroom, I believe, at the last meeting, uh, where there is a pipe that was covered with cloth that was an ADA regulation that the city had to abide by. The particular sink in question that was wrapped with the cloth is a handicapped sink. So if some of you have gone to that lady's restroom upstairs across from the commission chambers, it's the sink furthest to the wall. It is raised a little higher than the normal sinks that we have. And that's for persons who may be in wheelchairs that need to go and pull up to the sink for um, washing their hands. And that is ADA regulation for that pipe to be covered. We have spoken to Public Works. They have rectified the situation. There is another type of covering that they were able to uh, purchase that is also uh, fit and proper for the ADA regulation for that pipe to be covered just in case hot water is used when a handicapped person is using the sink. And they did not want to state, the regulation states that it had to be covered so the handicapped person who's possibly using the sink with the wheelchair, um, they don't get scalded if the pipe was to get hot. Um, so I believe that was a question that was made at the last uh, commission meeting during public participation. So hopefully those uh, residents who made those concerns to the commission, they're, I don't see either here, hopefully they're watching or will watch sometime in the next week or so and see that their questions have been resolved. Uh, the Herald Newsletter, for those that provide submissions, March 16th is the deadline. You know, at 12 noon on the deadline day, the information is needed so it can be compiled and sent to our printer on time so that it can get out to our residents in a timely manner based on our schedule. And also, we are in election season for our special election, which is May the 4th. Uh, if you don't think you can make it to the polls, Applications are now available. You can come in person or you can go to our website right on the home page. You will see the notice that says application for absentee ballot. You click that link and you'll see the application completed. You can bring it in or you can mail it in to my attention or the Board of Elections attention. That concludes my report. Thank you so much. Uh, is there any questions from the commission? Seeing that, thank you so much. So much. Uh, also, I'd like to uh, say thank you, Dr. Cresswell, for the 
following up on those questions from the last meeting. Uh, it's important that we get the information out to the residents as soon as we possibly can and rectify things in the community as quickly as possible. So uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, next, I have the report from yeah, District Heights Youth Services Bureau, of Dr. Beverly Sargent. Good evening, everyone. Um, please accept the Youth Services Bureau report as submitted. Um, in February, we held a number of workshops for children uh, at Thurgood Marshall. Um, we had a STEM, the STEM class at the Youth Services Bureau. We started a, a group therapy class at Woodland Springs and also at Ideal's Child Care Center. We have the largest group at Woodland Springs that we've had, I would say, probably in the last seven years. We have 18 children whom we're seeing there. March 28th, our budgeting workshop begins. We finished the nutrition workshop in February, so now we're starting with budgeting, and the gardening workshop starts soon as well. Um, and if anyone would like to register, please call the YSB at 301-336. 7600. These classes are free and they're for the entire family regardless of age. And if you attend, um, because of the grant we're receiving from the Governor's Office of Children through the uh, Local Management Board, everyone who participates uh, earns a $10 gift, gift card from a grocery store. And we're thinking either the March class or the um, the April class, I'm not sure which one, but we're actually going to take the group to a grocery store and help them choose healthy foods using that gift card. So please give us a call and sign up. We're really excited about spring break, April 6th through the 10th. Our Kindness Matters workshops will take place every day from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. But this year we're doing something really special. We have a professional chef who's going to come in and teach a junior uh, cooking class every day that week. And this goes along with our nutrition program as well. Also, we have two college tours, um, April 7th, and I'm, I apologize I didn't put the date for the other one, but they're all, all of them are during the week of spring break. So one tour is to Cochran State, and the other one is to Bowie State. These tours are free. We just ask parents and teenagers to please bring enough money for lunch, and that averages about $10. But you know, you know if your child eats more than that, so just you know, be prepared. Make sure that they're prepared. Um, and so we're also excited about that, too. So the, the ages are 13 to 24 for the college tours. But we also invite parents to come. We really love it when parents will come along with us. It's very encouraging to um, your child. And lastly, well, two things. June 6th is the health fair. We're excited about um, all of the vendors who will have or participants will have in this year's health fair. So please get the word out. It's in conjunction with the District Heights Day, but the health fair is held here in the uh, recreation center. And finally, September 19th is the My Soul Knows 5K. So we've been working on this 5K for quite some time. The 5K helps us to supplement costs for mental health services. There are a lot of people in the community who, who have insurance, but because of their co-pays or other things, because of their co-pays and other things, it's really just too expensive for them to use their insurance. So, you know, running for uh, our 5K helps support that, helps support families. Um, and lastly, the mental health moments. I wanted to talk about reframing. Um, is when we have a loss or when we're struggling, is it really a loss or a learning opportunity? So usually there's more than one way to look at any situation, and we want to encourage you, no matter what situation you're going through, if it's a struggle, if it's pain, if it's loss, see if you can find a way to look at that situation in a different way. Tell your story in a different way, or define your story differently. Reframing can be very, uh, can be very powerful in a person's life. And that's the Youth Services Bureau report. Thank you. 
Thank you so very much. I turned the mic off because of the reverberation for the uh, for all the mics being on. But are there any questions at all? Yes, I have one. I, I didn't hear you give the age for the kindness matters workshop. You might have, but I didn't remember you giving it. Um, it starts at eleven. Age 11 and goes up to 18. Thank you. Are there any questions at all from the commission? Say so, no, thank you very much. Thank you. So, the next report we have is code enforcement. Uh, Ms. Michelle Watkins. Good evening. Please accept code enforcement report for February uh, 2020. Uh, I'll briefly go over a few um, details. I will start with section 402, which is the housing code. Uh, we posted 20 notices on uh, private homes. Those notices reference sanitation, uh, uh, littering, uh, um, different um, parts of the exterior of the property. Uh, for the notices mailed to the property, we posted four of those, but the major, both, all four of those had to do with dog complaints. We've had quite a few dog complaints and more than that for last month and uh, the month before. So we've sent letters to the um, properties. One of the complaints was referenced to a, a dog that had died from another dog killing the dog. So um, just tell um, property owners, if you do have a deceased dog on your property, you need to contact animal control before you um, dispose of the carcass. So that was one of the issues that we had um, this month. Uh, also, notices that were po um, sent to the property was referenced to liens for cleanups that we were um, sent to public works. Um, the property was cleaned up and uh, well now is in the process of being leaned. Uh, Four stop work orders were um, issued. Uh, they all came in to get their building permits. And uh, 13 licenses were um, received and processed, but we had to um, post uh, nine of those properties because the individuals had not come, so they were in violation. So they are now all except for one have come in and that one has been given its final notice, so they are in the process also. Mandatory inspections were performed and for the, the revenue, we uh, brought in $3,585.48. The majority of that was from licensing journal entry. I attended a CISOA meeting, which is the quarterly meeting for uh, code enforcement officers. The, this, they, are, they talked about issues such as, well, the MML is, um, that w that's coming up for the summer and issues that uh, municipalities have with throughout the county and that is it for the uh, report I have a couple of issues that I wanted to talk about one of them was the start of the summer is coming so we the code enforcement will be concentrating on the exterior of the property so those individuals I know uh, it's coming up time for the city to do its cleanup so those individuals and I'm saying it now so that the, they have time and they realize that if you have stuff that you're going to be cleaning out of your property or out from the exterior that to start getting prepared now so they can put it out for that day that or the week that public works clean up so i'm giving every individuals plenty of time to know that they have to clean up the exterior but they have that opportunity to put those um, items out for, I believe it's in April, so I'm giving them that time to make sure they realize that. Uh, we also had a couple of issues with dumping tires within the city. One of the major ones, we, we uh, the owner finally contacted us, reference to cleaning up the tire, so um, we have agreed, or he has agreed, that by hopefully next week the tires will be gone, so if not, the, the city will be cleaning it. And we also had another issue with another dumping of tires. So when I'm asking the residents, if you see any dump trucks, especially with tires on it, please notify code enforcement because they're looking as if they're trying to dump it in our city. 
and that's not um, that's a violation so if we catch them that way we can cite the individual that's doing it but right now we don't know who's doing it so we have to spend the time to contact the owners especially if they're putting it on vacant properties which the owners may not necessarily know about but they still have to clean it up and that is all for code enforcement any questions any questions from the commission yes Commissioner Irving. Okay, I have uh, two. One might not be under you, but since you mentioned dogs, could you give the policy on pit bulls? I have seen some dogs, and I don't know if they're mixed or if they're pure pit bulls. Okay, if you notify code enforcement, or you, the general rule is you have to contact animal control. And the number for animal control is 301-780-7242. If that's not the correct contact uh, code enforcement, and we can give you the correct number, but if I remember, that is the number. But animal control, if you have a complaint on if an animal is a pit bull or not, you give them the address, and they would do a breed check for that property. And they will also tell you if the property, the, if the animal is licensed for that property. You can call us, too, and give us the complaint, and we will do it for you. So, but some individuals want to find out for themselves, so that's what they do. But you can get a breed check done. Are they still illegal in Prince yes. George's County? Yes, uh, pit bulls are illegal in Prince George's County. Okay, I've found. But there, there are some animals called king corsos, which look a lot like pit bulls. So that's why you need a breed test to make sure whether or not it is a king corso or a pit bull. Okay, and the last thing is not a question; it's just a comment. Basically. Um, just wanted to thank you and Ms. Barbara for the job that you all have been doing because I don't think a lot of people know you're one man deep as far as coming out and doing the visits and all of that. Uh, hopefully by the end of March you'll have some assistance. Yes. And you know Ms. Barbara is helping you of course with the administrative part. But it definitely takes at least two full time people. Hopefully maybe even three in the near future. But at least two right now for sure. So I just wanted to make sure that uh, you got your accolades because you're doing a good job, especially for one person. Thank you. And Ms. Bobber. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Michelle, I wanted to know that, well, First of all, thank you for the work that you do, and I know that you have been inundated with a lot of backlogs. But my question is, have you had a chance to really focus on the vacant properties in the city? When you say vacant, we keep a, a track of them. We give that to the police department for them to, to check, because we cannot go into a property unless it, is, it has an issue. But keeping a track of a vacant is the only thing we can do. Unless there is a, a violation on it, then we have to notify generally the bank if we cannot find the owner and clean the property. So if there is a vacant property by you and there's an issue, notify us and we will check the property and then notify who's ever the responsible party to have it cleaned. Also, I've seen a lot of for sale signs. Yes. Um, so does that mean that that's a great it, thing that's happening it, for it us. is a great thing but it's our it's a more job consuming for us because the properties are being sold but if if you see a property being worked on a lot that's what happens the properties are sold they're renovated but they don't always the new owners don't always know that they have to come and get a building permit from the city uh, so the properties are worked on and fixed especially in the evenings or on the weekends. So that's our biggest issue, finding that out so that we can track and get them, you know, get the permits and get them clear. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Michelle, uh, for the report. Uh, seeing no further questions, thank you very much for your report. Okay. Next, we have Public Works, Buildings and Grounds Department by Mr. Brian Edwards. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'd like to ask the Commission to uh, set my report as submitted. I'll just read through it real, real briefly. Uh, we conducted uh, routine building and ground maintenance. 
Can, can y'all hear me okay? okay. Uh, Burmish floors on the downstairs hallway, stage, kitchen, and also did extensive cleaning in room 400. Conducted maintenance and repairs to the YSB building, which consists of replacing light bulbs, building bookshelves, and repairing leaky faucet. Removed the rainbow contractor sign from the YSB property. Con conducted routine limb collection, which took us three days to complete. Conducted eight trash runs to eight to city. Filled potholes in all the alleys to eight section two. Clean the curbs and gutters along the following streets. Kipling Parkway, both sides, from Marlboro Pike to Marbury Drive. District Heights Parkway, both sides, from Breton Street to Marbury Drive. And also Driver Place from Halleck Street to Foster Street. Cleaned up trash and debris that was illegally dumped uh, from some of the alleys in Section 1. Clean and come back some of the overgrowth in the creek bank along Marbury Drive, both sides. Did extensive cleaning behind the business district along Marble Pike. Removed two truckloads of bulk trash that was illegally dumped along Scott Key Drive and also District Heights Parkway in front of the church slash daycare. Did extensive cleaning on the vacant property located at 7202 Lansdale Street, which consists of removing three truckloads of bulk trash and cutting the grass, total in charges. $1,995.79. Trash concerns zero. If I may, I'd like to uh, just address a little bit what Michelle was talking about as far as the dumping and the types of things that's going on in the city currently. I mean, for the last several months, I've been talking about it, how, how out of hand it's getting. <clears throat> I just want to uh, stress that the tires that she mentioned that's being dumped on these vacant properties or ain't just a few tires. There are hundreds of, of hundreds of tires. And the part that, I guess, confuses me is they're not actually being dumped. You know, where you just drive a dump truck up and lift it up and all the tires come off and they take off. These folks are stacking these tires like they would stack something on their own property. So not only are they doing this, it's got to be time consuming. They have to be there for long periods of time to be able to do something like this. I was amazed when I seen it. And they're still there, and the uh, property owner said that he would take care of it. Uh, I have my doubts whether he, that, that he will be able to do it. He might, I don't know, hopefully. And now they went to a second vacant property. So everybody needs to be kind of alert of this type of behavior. I don't think it's a big truck. I think it may be a pickup truck. And they're, bringing, they're coming back several times. But I don't think they're panicking and moving fast to attract a lot of attention to themselves. Because they're there a while. You know? So I just wanted to uh, make you all aware of that. Uh, <clears throat> the second thing is that when I say trash runs and illegal dumping along Sky Key, it's really hard to explain is that this amount of stuff is, is getting completely out of hand. We're spending probably 75% of our time cleaning up this type of stuff. A lot of our resources are going to dumpsters, uh, dumping fees at, at the city landfill. You know, every Monday morning we come to work and I, I you know, with car parts and mattresses and dressers and, and they're dumping it right on the side of the street. You know, and uh, nobody has reported anything about seeing any of this activity, but it's happening and it's really at hand. And it's costing the taxpayers a lot of money because nobody has been, uh, that I know of, has been uh, caught doing it or arrested doing it or fined for doing it. But uh, please, can everybody just help us, you know, keep, keep, keep an eye on that type of behavior. Report it if you see something. That's my report. Thank you so very much, Brian. Uh, really quick, is these uh, acts, do you believe that it is late at night, for instance, uh, 2 or 4 o'clock in the morning, those, that type of hour? It's very possible. I don't know. I, I'm assuming it probably is at dark. You know, it gets dark earlier now in the wintertime. But uh, behind the business area up on Marble Pike, that's, you know, that's been going on for years. And, you know, almost like clockwork every Monday. Yeah. It's another fresh pile of trash. 
uh, what's going on with the tires is something new. I can't really explain that, yeah. but dumping along District Heights Parkway in front of the church, I mean, they just dumped it and left it, you know. And folks from the church called me and, you know, of course we took care of it. Yeah. But uh, I'm assuming it's happening at, at nighttime. But uh, nobody has seen anything, or at least they haven't reported it. Yeah, that's amazing. So let's everybody be vigilant and, and look and see what's happening in your community, in your area, down your street. Um, when you see suspicious activity with cars or trucks, please uh, uh, pay attention to that and something that you need to report, please report it. Because like uh, you said, Brian, we are wasting a lot of money, taxpayers' money, uh, because we're not saying anything. We're not uh, stepping up. So uh, please, let's do that so we can move forward, OK? Uh, any questions from the commission? Seeing none, thank you very much for your report. Next, we have some unfinished business. Um, we're going to talk about the Senior City Architect contract, uh, Mr. Baden. Good evening again. Uh, you have in your <coughs> packet a memo dated February 28th to the Commission uh, reference to the Senior Center Project Architect contract. Uh, so you remember at the last work session, the commission awarded the contract for construction for the Senior Center project. We also issued the contract for the third party inspectors uh, for the project. Uh, it stated at that time that in order to move forward, there will be other uh, contracts and proposals that I'd be bringing forth to the commission uh, that will be needed in order to move the project forward. Uh, the one you have in front of you now is a proposal from the architectural firm, Morgan Design Group. Uh, most of you are familiar with them. They have been the architect of record on the Senior Center project since its inception. They helped us help take us through uh, the conceptual design phase, uh, the construction uh, document phase, uh, the bidding phase, and they were also the architect for, through that whole process for the Youth Services Bureau. So we've you know, had about a six year relationship with them. Uh, part of their original proposal uh, back in uh, 2014 uh, for the Senior Center project was to do the uh, construction administration from the architect's uh, uh, side for the project uh, when we went forward. Uh, they submitted their proposal, as I said, six years ago. They've provided an updated proposal uh, because it's been six, six years. Uh, cost of services have increased. The scope of work of the project had increased. Uh, some of the design team that he had, some of the sub-consultants that he had are no longer there, so he had to uh, solicit uh, some other uh, people for the design team. So, you know, all of those factors have, uh, uh, you know, changed the price of his work. So the proposal you have in front of you is for $47,995. Uh, and that is on the table for your consideration uh, uh, tonight. Dan, what was the original cost of uh, those six years ago? Uh, the original cost was $27,885. Did we, uh, I know we had to have the additional funds and we use uh, metrics to figure out, you know, how much we would have to use. Uh, was that amount figured into that? Um, that we don't have to go into additional funds for. Right, you're referring to the uh, estimates that uh, I had provided uh, a few months back yes. for the total cost. Mm -hmm. uh, my estimate at that point, uh, I did not have a proposal from him because uh, this proposal just came through uh, January 22nd. The uh, proposal I had was, you know, uh, dated uh, September 20th and uh, had included $40,000 uh, in that fee. That was my estimate at that time. So this is $7,995 uh, greater than what was presented to you back on September 20th. 
So I'm talking about the so the seven thousand dollar increase. Um, is are we positive that that money doesn't have to come out of the uh, general fund? We we <clears throat> budgeted that within the whole um, scope of the project. Within the projected cost, we had contingency amounts. Yeah, um, yep, that's what I'm talking about. You know, $219,230. Um, you know, there will be things that come in higher or lower than what we've estimated. I mean, those uh, figures given to you back in September were, uh, you know, figures that were fixed. We knew about some of them, you know, are, are to be determined, such as, you know, what is the final cost for furniture and fixtures? We haven't even specced those out. Um, project management costs, low voltage security phone, computer costs, uh, the PEPCO WSSC systems fees, you know, those are all things we put estimates in at that time, including the architect's fees and, you know, as we quantify these as the project goes along, you know, hopefully some will come in lower than, you know, what we've estimated. They may come in higher, you never yep. know. So, okay. Well, since uh, Commissioner Miller is over general government, um, I want her to speak on um, this more than more than me. So, Commissioner Miller, any, any thoughts on? Yeah, I, I see that this is uh, dated January the 22nd, and you said that this was just submitted. Dan? Um, I provided uh, this memo to the commission back on February 28th. Um, you know, uh, I sent it all to you last week. Uh, when, you know, I did not present it to you because we were not moving forward until last week with the project, so it was a mute point to put something before you that uh, you all were not considering. So until the, you decided to go forward with the Senior Center project, um, that's the point last week, February 28th, I think that was shortly the day after you all approved the contract. I provided you with that additional information, and at that meeting I had uh, informed you that there would be additional contracts coming before you for consideration in order to move the project forward. I think we need to discuss this further on a plan when we're looking at spending more money. Uh, I really don't want to make a decision tonight on it. Um, because we have something else that we have to look at. Uh, um, I, I would like a better plan on sitting down looking at all the costs before moving forward. Um, that, that's up to you all. I would suggest you uh, put that date down, uh, decide that now, because I've already notified the contractor that we're moving forward. Uh, I've already planned to go pick up the permit for the project, and the third-party inspectors are all been informed, and uh, Charlay's been in coordination with our state legislature to get the bond bill extended as well for yeah. additional three years. So yeah. what are all those things in the works? And yeah, uh, yeah, and, and, and I look at this too, this process. If, if the commission desires to wait, uh, you know, three of the commissioners uh, voted to move this project further. If we continue to wait, the price is going to continue to increase. Um, I think we have to stop being afraid to pull the trigger, and we've already said that the senior city will be uh, built. Uh, it, but if it's a pleasure of the commission to wait further, um, uh, it is a pleasure of the commission. Um, so we have that additional cost, which is seven thousand dollars, which we uh, aligned for out of the two hundred nineteen thousand um, dollars cushion. Correct. Uh, there was a contingency of 219000 which at this point you would say you would be going into those funds based on the other estimates. Uh, absolutely. Then we look at um, something else that was on the agenda, but we're going to talk about this first. Does the... I want to make a comment. Okay. Commissioner Miller. So, so when we decided to borrow the $2 million, I did say that we would have financial meetings on a regular basis. So we we'll make sure that we're all on the same page moving forward instead of having something put in front of us at a meeting to make a decision on. Um, as I said, that was presented to you a week ago, so it wasn't just put on your, on, in front of you tonight. Uh, the resolution that the mayor and commission passed a month or so ago, within that resolution, you all agreed amongst yourself that you would have 
uh, regular financial meetings. So that is up to you to set those meetings up. And you um, need to be a part of those meetings. Absolutely. But as a treasurer, I would uh, hope you would invite me to those meetings. Well, when you're putting something in front of us, we want you to be at that meeting. And you need to initiate it when you are coming to this point where you need our approval. That's oh, I, I agree with that, and that's the reason I sent it to you a week in advance so that you'd have time to review it. And I said, if you had any questions, please let me know uh, in the email that I sent it to you with. Um, I did not receive any questions prior to the meeting tonight. So I, I would be more than happy to attend all those meetings. Uh, you just need to let me know when, when they are. Commissioner Miller, so you want to hold off on moving forward uh, with any decisions until we have a meeting, which I think we'll all be out of a conference uh, next week. Uh, that'll be a good time to, to talk, or was it a week after that? We can talk after the meeting. Okay. We'll decide after the meeting. Dan can stick around and we can talk after the Tonight? meeting. Tonight? Yes, sir. Sure. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you so very much. So we'll give it the second part to um, Commissioner. Miller, you want to talk about later on after the meeting? Okay, so there's the two part um, where it talks about the um, senior project architect contract, contract and the senior center project management. These two pieces we can talk about um, if the uh, commission so desires. Well, Dan, do you want to talk more about these, uh, the project managers? Um, it, it could wait to the meeting. Yeah, I mean, it's another meeting. money issue, so yeah. you know, if you all, whatever your pleasure is. Yeah, I think since it was brought up that we have that conversation, and, and the, if the commission so chooses to do that, um, we will do that. Um, can I get a, a question from Commissioner Irvin? Okay, we had mentioned two million dollars, right? So. Is what we are looking at now going to be within that $2 million that we have said, or is this adding on to it, you think? Um, the, the first item on the agenda, for the most part, it is in that $2 million, because we had 40000 of that covered in there. Uh, the second proposal, uh, a uh, larger portion of that was not in those original estimates. 67,000 of that figure was. Uh, you know, you all need to make a decision on what direction you're going as far as project management. Uh, there's different options uh, that you need to discuss. And, you know, as uh, Commissioner Miller had suggested, you know, that should probably wait until, to make a decision on that till after you all have further discussion. Okay, so technically we could go on with the uh, first, are they tied together? Um, the yeah, 47,000. I mean, we're talking about a $5 million project and that estimate was $7,000 more. 7000 and a $5 million project to me is, is not a big deal and I would recommend you go forward with it if you're comfortable. I think what I'm asking is the first motion here mm -hmm. for the 47. Yes. Is that separate from the other? Yes. Okay, so we could do one and look at the other later. Yes. Okay. It is the pleasure of the commission. However, I think if we're going to discuss one, and they're both dealing with finances um, and negotiations, uh, we need to discuss those together. Um, separate and apart doesn't make any uh, sense at this point. So if we want to talk about it later, Commission? We can wait. I just wanted some clarification. We're going to do it tonight, though, right? We're going to have that conversation tonight. Okay. Okay. So, thank you, Dan. Okay. So it seems like the pleasure of the Commission is to wait um, to ha have that conversation. Um, Tonight, thank you. So next, what we have is new business, and we have First Baptist Church of District Heights request. Commission, in your package, you have the request from First Baptist Church District Heights regarding the annual Easter Community Day and wanting to block off a portion of the street from our electronic sign. Um, at the corner of Marbury and Kipling up to Lansdale Street, um, just for the safety of all those that will be attending. 
I've already been in contact with Captain Schmick in regards to um, what has been done in the past. Um, he's ready to make sure that we have police available um, if it's approved by the commission. So the police department has already been made aware. I'll take it. I, Commissioner Irving, move to approve First Baptist Church District Heights request for street closure on April 11, 2020. Can I get a second? Commissioner Blake seconds it. All in favor? No opposed, no abstentions. Vote passes 4 0. Thank you. Is there a representative here other than Ms. Johnson? You're Ms. Austin? Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I think where we are now, uh, the moment that some have been waiting for, uh, we're gonna introduce uh, Ms. Lou Williams. She is the chairperson for the Board of Supervisors of Elections and she will continue from this point. Thank you very much. Good evening. Mm, that didn't sound good. Good afternoon, good evening. Oh, okay, that's good, that's better. As you know, the city has a vacancy in the office of mayor, and I am here tonight to present the candidates. We had three individuals to apply for this position. And all three are people that you currently know. Three candidates. First candidate, Commissioner Cynthia Miller, Wade. Former Mayor Jack Sims. I'm sorry, I'm out of order, but Vice Mayor Jonathan Matlock, former mayor. <laughs> These are your candidates for mayor of the city of District Heights. Each candidate will be given three minutes. I'm sorry, five. Did I not promise you five? Okay. Five minutes to introduce themselves to you. I would like for you to listen carefully because this is very important for this city. Candidates, you have five minutes. At the end of the five, or during your five minutes, I ask that you give, you, give the audience a little information about yourself and to tell us what are your plans for this city. Where do you plan to take us in 2020 and beyond? Audience, I ask you to listen very carefully because one of these three will be your next mayor. So let's start the introductions. Commissioner Miller, you will be, you will be first to come forth, convince us that you are the best person to vote for, and anything else that you may have to say. To elected officials, city employees, residents, business partners, and friends, good evening. It is with great pleasure that I stand before you this evening to share my vision for the future of the city of District Heights. First of all, I would like to thank the District Heights residents for electing me to two terms of office as the city commissioner. I would also like to thank the employees of District Heights for their tireless efforts to make this city great. My name is Cynthia Miller, and I'm a candidate for the office of mayor in the city of District Heights. And I am, the cat and I am a two-time elected District Heights commissioner. In my capacity as commissioner, among other duties as liaison, I manage general government of the city. I've been a resident of the city of District Heights for 24 years. 
and I've worked in the private sector in federal government for over 34 years. Married to an amazing man for 23 years in June of, 20 of this year. I took an interest in the city of District Heights government about 10 years ago. I made the decision to run for the city commission office when I realized that there were issues in this city where I could help to make a difference. I recognized early on that the city was challenged with vacant properties, lighting issues, abandoned cars, front of homes, high grass, street sidewalks in need of repair, trash in the rear of our businesses, our young people in need of supervision, and above all else, the need of creating a safe place to live and work. Over the past seven years, I have accepted the challenge of the position of commissioner. Once a month, the commission votes on various plans or projects that impacts the city. Each of us has specific liaison duty to manage in our government. It is in my opinion that performing general duties is not enough. We must listen to our residents, business visitors, and employees. We have a duty to listen to our constituents. As a result of listening, we have to ask. We can no longer just think we have all the answers. This fine city and its residents have a wealth of knowledge on a myriad of topics that impact our beautiful city. Living in our city, we have analysts, project managers, electricians, law enforcement officers, mechanics, coaches, business managers, military representatives, and a host of other occupations at our disposal. Clearly, there is no I in team. This commission does a lot of good work in the community. However, sometimes government takes too long completing various tasks. We have been working on a city charter for four years. We have been talking about hiring a new chief of police for over nine months. None of these tasks have been completed. Clearly, we can do better. With your help, we will do better. Leadership is the process of getting things done through people. No one person can complete all of the work of the office of the mayor and the commission. It has to be team effort. We as government and our community must work closely together to identify challenges and problems in our city. After these challenges have been identified, we must develop viable short and long-term solutions. We also have a duty to create an atmosphere of inclusion. No idea is a bad idea. We must consider all information that comes to our attention with, with a view towards seeking solutions which enrich our quality of life in this city. With respect to the public safety, code enforcement, public works, recreation, family and youth services, and general government under my leadership, I will focus on enhancing services in our city. I cannot tell you how proud I am of being a resident of this great city. I am even more proud of the fact that you have selected me to represent you interest in the city as a city commissioner through two elections. Over the past seven years, I've served your interests on many matters relating to the well-being of this great city. As mayor, I will continue to serve your best interests. I have the experience, the expertise, and the leadership qualities to represent the city. Vote for Cynthia Miller for mayor May 4th. Thank you. We will have Vice uh, Mayor Jonathan Metlock. Elizabeth Warren, uh, yeah, I was just watching her actually before I, I came down here to speak. And uh, uh, I don't know, man, we, things, things shifted uh, and, and, and it took a turn that I don't think anybody was ready for. But I will say that I. Th th Good evening, District Heights. Where we are as, as a country because the. the I am excited to be standing here in front of the residents that I have chosen to serve for these many years. And 
For one, I wanted to greet you all and thank you all for the opportunities that you have afforded me thus far. I am Jonathan Medlock. I am the current uh, vice mayor, current acting mayor of the city of District Heights. I am from a small town in Georgia called Folkestone. Folkestone is an area that taught me the skills and abilities to be a man, to be steeped in the country roots and understanding of family and of tribe. When coming to District Heights some 17 years ago at the DMV, I came to District Heights and found my tribe. The, the citizens and residents of District Heights have shown me love, support, and have helped me, help guide me through my journey as a man. I have worked for the Department of Defense for the last 27 years, being selected as a student in high school to serve our nation, and I have served that nation proudly, bearing true allegiance to my country and my city. That city, I'm proud to say, is District Heights. In 2014, I decided to run for electoral office here in District Heights. For 10 years before, I ran and chaired an organization called the National Black United Front, a proud member who understood that I was unapologetically black and I loved the community that I served. I served in the DMV. We created programs for our youth, helped build our seniors, and continue to do the work for our people. So in 2014, I ran and it was delayed. In 2015, I ran again and was delayed. In 2016, the residents of District Heights saw fit that I be worthy enough to be appointed to the position of commissioner. And in 2018, I became the vice mayor. Through hard work and determination and steadfastness, I served my city. So in 2019, when the chance and opportunity came to lead, to lead my community further, I stepped up and became the acting mayor in this current position. I am also the vice chair of the Human Relations Commission for our county. I was appointed on the two terms, two county executives, Rashawn Baker and currently Angela Also Brooks. I was appointed as vice chair of this commission because of my leadership. I am also the leadership development chair for the 100 black men of Prince George's County. I am also its sergeant at arms for this great organization. People wonder, wonder sometimes what are my passions, and my passions are for my people first. It is for my youth and it's for my seniors. It is for community change and organizational understanding. I have done this all my life, most of my life, is to serve. Thank you, District Heights, for allowing me to continue to serve you, and I will continue to serve you proudly. Also understanding from the human relations side about the mental health of our community and as an individual. My vision for the city is very simple. To continue to, to continue to make our city safe for our families and in the midst of this coronavirus, to beef up and strengthen our emergency preparedness, to revise our workforce through economic development, and to strengthen our community through partnerships. I know that many may wonder, what will happen to our city? Will we continue to be steeped in the remnants of controversy, or will we rise to new heights? My vision is the latter. We will rise to new heights. We will not be seen as the last, the least, the divided, nor the lost. We will rise in unity and transparency and integrity on a foundation that gives honor to our rich city history and the emerging community that we will be. No man nor woman is an island. This suggests that no human being should live in isolation. We're all interconnected to each other, and no one stands around without the support of one another. 
So I ask you on May 4th to vote me as your mayor and let me continue to serve you for the city of District Heights. Thank you so very much. Okay, finally, Mr. Jack C. Sims, former mayor of the city of District Heights. Yes, I have. Three times I've been mayor. And I think right now our community is in a situation where it needs some experience. You have a sheet in your hand probably that says something about, you know, people have been asking me, what have you done? Well, I think we've done a lot. And I say we because I always look at what we do up here as, as elected official, officials as a team. We all work together. We work together for you. We work together for our kids. We work together for our community. We work together for our state. We work together, and when we work together, we get things done. I'm going to give you a couple of things on my vision. I think that's probably the most important part of why we're here tonight. The first thing I want to do is to get the Senior Citizen Center finished. Six years is ridiculous for us to have, to be going through all we're going through and not have that done. So that's the first thing on my agenda. Second, the second thing is emergency preparedness. We got a situation going on in this country. This virus is going around. So we need to have a plan, an emergency plan, that if something happens to our schools, our community, we have something that we're going to do to make a move on. We're not going to get caught from that foot with this virus going around. We're not going to pay on what we're going to do for our residents. So that to me is very, very important. The third thing is we need a chief of police. How in the world can we have been district heights for all this time, 85 years, I think, and not have a chief of police for our residents, protecting our security, to serve and protect. You know, we should always, always, always have a chief of police. And to get into this position where we don't have one, I ain't going for it. So that'd be the third thing. The fourth thing I want to move forward with is our shopping center. We have a shopping center across the street that wants to come into the city. And they want us to be a part of that. So it creates what? Something we haven't had before, like uptown, downtown district heights. Why not? Other communities have that. You know, it creates small business opportunities. You know, it provides employment opportunities. So let's get that done. There are a number of dark spots in our community. I have people all the time saying, you know, we don't have enough lights in the street, I'm scared to come home tonight. We should address that. I've heard we've been talking about it for years. When, when am I going to get a light? When am I going to get some, some, some light in my, in my house or near my house so I can come home and don't be worried about things? We need to do that. We also need some traffic calming, calming things done because we have kids in our community. Someone's, I was down at Camp the other day, I was on the Howard Street, and someone said to me, you know, is there any way for us to get some speed bumps? And I said, I don't see why not. He said, they came out and put some, some signs up says, be careful of the children. No, you shouldn't be driving so fast that you did, 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 did. we need to be careful of the children. You should be, you should be, well, we should be, we should have the speed bumps there. We need to start a project to enhance our sidewalks. I'm sure that everybody in here who owns a house, probably if you have a sidewalk, you may have one that's not level. You may have one that some of your family trips over, or your kids can't ride a bicycle. 
We need a sidewalk project. That helps with the property values in our, in our house and in our homes. You know, right now, we're in a situation where our houses are being sold, and the prices are up. A house is something, one of the things that we, we, we uh, invest in for our family and our future. So why not make it nice? Let's get a, let's get a sidewalk project together. Now, recreation is doing a great job with different programs, but we need to enhance it a little bit. They're doing wonderful programs for children. We need to do some more for our seniors. I think we're going to be able to take care of that. And I want to plan a housing fair. We have a lot of empty houses in the city, and I think we need to get a housing fair going. We had one one time called 40, 40 and 4. And we sold about eight or nine houses that were empty on that fair. So we need to get somebody, uh, uh, let's say, an opportunity for those houses to be sold. We have houses sitting around empty, that, that, and that's your, your property value. And we all want our houses to be at max when it comes to what their value is. And uh, one other thing, I was kind of like to start the person who's the health start the veterans project. So we want to make sure we get that done for the best. Thank you so much, Mr. Heiss. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. 